We have the opportunity to make a habit of empathy. One example from my own life for the way that compassion works in your life to enlarge you is that when I was, um, uh, I was part of the civil rights movement, you know, um, and uh, I wasn't an or I'm not really an organizer. I was a little bit an organizer in the beginning days of the feminism, but I'm not very good as an organizer. I mean, my skill is writing, you know, that's what I know how to do, but, but I have great respect for organizers. And uh, I was, uh, but I, I loved, uh, you know, it was very, uh, the, that movement moved me. You know, um, it was, it was, it, that was empathy. You know, I, I could, I, I could feel myself into that situation. I mean, it, it, we'll never know the, this entirely this, the suffering of somebody who's, people who have different conditions in our lives. But I, but I, but I move myself imaginatively, you know, a great deal into, into the situation of African Americans. And I, I read, um, you know, I read writers like James Baldwin and, and Richard Wright and, and, I, and Ralph Ellison, and I learned a whole new vocabulary of oppression. And I learned how to frame and see oppression and, uh, and to describe it. Things like internalization, you know, when you're confronted with uh, hatred or disparagement, you internalize, Ellison wrote about that beautifully in Invisible Man, you internalize those prejudicial views towards you. It's and in terms and of let, let, me, let me finish. And um, so I, um, so th what happened to me was that as I, is something that happened in American history too, and, and many, many feminists had happened to many of us, that somehow learning about this oppression allowed us to look at our own situation and we began to see, oh, women are oppressed too. Women are disparaged too. We internalize too. So, so that very often through your empathy, with somebody else, you're going to learn a great deal about yourself, and through helping other people liberate themselves, you can, you you will liberate yourself, yourself in a, in in some way too. Maybe not as in in as in a way that is as obvious as the influence that the abolition movement had on the suffrage movement or the civil rights movement had on the feminist movement, but maybe in a more subtle internal way you will, through your empathy, through other people, begin to develop yourself and, and have more empathy for yourself. So it's, it, the interconnection goes back and forth. You know, it goes both ways and constantly. It's a kind of uh, system of resonance and vibration, like sound in a room. It, it, it doesn't stop anywhere. You know, Obama talks about that as well. He, he says when we don't empathize, we diminish ourselves. Yes, that's so right. Kind of yes, I love that. I love Obama saying that. When you don't, but it's one of the reasons I, I have such hope for him uh, as, as our next president. But, you know, um, yeah, I, 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 I think that's absolutely true. Where you fail to empathize, you do diminish yourself. Yeah. And you know sometimes it's 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 very very difficult to you know there I mean I I wrote in another book I wrote about Himmler, and I couldn't empathize with him as as the criminal he became came I couldn't, but I did empathize with him as the child who was made into that criminal, and I found out a lot about his childhood and wrote about that, you know how was he how was he made into this to this monster that he became. Came. In terms of uh, social justice, as, as I've interviewed, I interviewed at the First Congregational Church, and there's a lot of people in there who are into social justice movement. Yes. And what I noticed, a, a lot of them came to it because of seeing injustice uh, towards African Americans. And for example, one yes. uh, person told me that she was in in their church, which was all, an all white church in the South. Yeah. And an African American family came in, you know, and sat down, and then the the minister said, "Who does not belong here should go, should leave." And then they got up and left. Mm. 
and she she felt that yeah. kind of exclusion. Yes. And it was like that was like the beginning. It was hard to put words to it and so forth for, but it was like the beginning of uh, her becoming aware of kind of injustice and yeah. it led to a whole um, taking part in you know civil rights and social justice yeah, it's, movement. It's a beautiful story. I think that wherever you there's you know wherever you you experience a failure of empathy you're actually you may think of it well I'm not going to give that away but in fact what you're doing is you're shutting a door on yourself you're closing off your world and uh if you know that's that's uh, an, a, a tragedy, a secondary tragedy, or another, an echoing tragedy. It's a tragedy that echoes the tragedy of people being divided against each other and 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 behaving in ways that are unjust towards each other. Is uh, you know that shutting of that door of your own soul. Have you heard uh, much of uh, Obama talking about empathy? Is that do you recall any of his speeches where he mentioned it? Uh, I can't recall them specifically, but I do no. know that he's mentioned Oh, them. okay, yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's quite amazing to me, because I know that, uh, yeah. uh, you know, George, and he, he's saying that empathy is the the, the ground, the fundamental uh, progressive value that uh, other progressive values come out, that when you uh, develop yeah. from. So when you empathize, that leads to a sense of responsibility for others, it leads to a sense of unity, Yes. Uh, community, sense of wanting equality for everyone. Well, I think it's it's also, um, you know, empathy. Pe people think of empathy as uh, uh, a sort of a luxury and uh, something that's not very practically minded and oh, you know, you altruistic and um, very pretty, but but you you. you you can't always survive by being empathetic. It, it's the the opposite is true, actually. In order, to, in 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 evolution, human beings survive through empathy. The reason that that human beings, human society, uh, was so much why why we were I'm sorry, the reason that human beings were successful as as hunters in, in the hunter gatherer period and and were able to defend ourselves against predators was because we formed societies and we were societies that were mutually supportive so uh, empathy served us 